Kaz, thanks again for coming on. I always love having you on as a guest, but I will say I'm, I think you forgot something. I did? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you were supposed to wear a Justin Haley t-shirt. Whoever loses has to wear uh, that person's uh, apparel. So uh, obviously you'll see Kaz in a uh, Justin Haley shirt <laughs> in the upcoming weeks here on the Pace Lab. I did remember to bring the hot screen though. Hey, now that's what I call a cold open. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Jesse Punch and welcome to the Pace Lap. One week into Charlotte Speed Weeks and we have already seen so much action and excitement. And if this past weekend's racing is any indicator of what's to come this weekend, then we are in for quite the show. And we have quite the show for you guys today here because I have Xfinity Series driver Kaz Gralla in studio with me today. He's going to chat all things Charlotte and also share a little treat from his sponsor Hot Screen. All that later. First, let's check in with some of NASCAR's other series. Starting with the exciting finish to the Wheel and Modified race this past weekend at Wall Stadium Speedway. Doug Coby led a race high 72 laps, but on lap 139, contact with Andrew Krause set Coby back, taking him out of contention for the win. Another caution on lap 146 set up a green white checkered finish. Rookie Timmy Catalano in Woody Pitcat on the front row on the overtime restart. Pitcat powered his way to the lead and he drove his smoking number 82 Chevrolet the final three laps to earn the win. While the field wrecks to the finish behind him. This is Pitcat's first modified win in four years. Rain shortened Sunday's ARCA race, but still a dominating performance from Chandler Smith, leading 140 laps for his first ARCA win this season. Exciting season opener for the NASCAR Pinty Series. The fifth caution of the day came on lap 44, setting up a restart with just four laps remaining. Andrew Ranger up front on the restart, but with just two to go, Kevin LaCroix takes the lead and he takes the checkered flag. A redeeming victory after finishing second at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park last fall. Yeah, all we need is uh, same speed as last year, but better luck and that's what we had today. Uh, uh, early in the race, I bent the toe in front with a contact, but the uh, car was still running good at the end. And, no, uh, easy when uh, the car is perfect like this. We have the best car on the track and uh, maybe one of the best drivers. <laughs> so, yeah, super happy for, uh, for the points and for the win. In the Peak Mexico Series, Salvador de Alba started on the pole and he dominated, leading the entire race, earning his first win this season. Friday's truck race kicked off the action at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Matt Crafton on the pole for the second week in a row. Fifth and final truck series race for Kyle Busch this season. He starts eighth, but he was leading the race by lap five. When the caution came out on lap 25, Kyle decided to pit, giving up the lead, and Crafton earned the stage one win. Kyle Busch led 22 laps in stage two, earning the second stage win. Four cautions in the third stage, set up a restart with just three remaining. Kyle Busch solidifies that lead spot on the restart and he controls the final three laps for the win. When we come back, Kaz will be joining me here in studio to recap the All-Star Race. The Open was a wild one. Both stage finishes went to overtime. The first, William Byron made a move at the last second, fighting Bubba Wallace to the line. Byron advances. In stage two, Bubba earned his spot, battling Daniel Suarez. Suarez spins while Bubba qualifies for the all-star race. Kyle Larson took the lead with just five laps remaining, and he wins the Open. Alex Bowman earned the fourth and final spot with a fan vote. In the all-star race, the field battled hard for their shot at the million dollars. Stage wins went to Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Joey Logano. 
Eric Jones brings out the caution on lap 73. Kyle Busch leading on the restart, but Larson gets a great push from Harvick and he jumps to the front. Larson leads the final 11 laps, earning the win in the 2019 All-Star Race. Here with me now is driver of the number 21 Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing, Kaz Gralla. Kaz, welcome back. Thanks for having me back again. Yeah, I know we, uh, it's been a few days since I've seen you. We spent a little bit of time at the track on Thursday and uh, shot some, was that Thursday or Friday? I don't know, all my days are running together. <laughs> shot some hot scream stuff, got to eat some ice cream um, and enjoyed the day. But what have you been up to since I saw you? Uh, not a whole lot, took a day off and now back in action this week, getting ready for, for the next race, which I've got a little time until. I've got a couple months since I'll be back on track, but that gives me time to, to look for more sponsorship and hit the gym and, and try to get ready for it. Well, when are you hopping back in a race car? Probably New Hampshire. We're working on that. It's still a work in progress, but it's my home race, so that's one that I've got circled is one I really want to do. Um, and then probably see me back uh, in the car for a road course later on in the year. Oh, two great ones then on the schedule ahead. And like you said, always fun to run at home. So we'll be looking forward to watching you in a couple months. But first, let's chat a little bit about this all-star race and the open at that. Because the open, in my opinion, was just as exciting as the race, if not uh, maybe even more exciting. But you had the weekend off, got to enjoy it as a fan. What are your thoughts? Well, as a fan, it was unbelievable to watch, especially the open. I mean, the all-star race was great. The package that NASCAR put together was phenomenal. But, I mean, it was really cool to see the guys in the open really hanging it out there and putting it on the line just to try to win each stage to get into the All-Star Race. I mean, that shows how much the All-Star Race means in our sport. So when you see guys out there like William Byron and Bubba Wallace driving that hard just to make it happen, no holes barred, I mean, that, that was really cool to see. And that's, that's the epitome of what this weekend meant. It's an exhibition race. There's no points on the line. Just go for it and as we mentioned it's an honor just to be in the all-star race to win the all-star race is a whole nother level i mean you get a million dollars which is awesome but you really you get your name in the record books for for history i mean the all-star race is exactly what it's called that's the biggest one that there is that's the one that a lot of drivers really would love to win i mean we've or not we but the cup guys have 36 races every year so they want to win all of them but there's always that one that stands out and it's the all-star race. So uh, I'm sure Larson was really excited about that. And to come from the open, like you mentioned, that is, that's unbelievable. To start at the back and drive through the field and win the race. And it's a short race. It's not like you have much time to get to the front. And he made it happen, especially with that one move in particular to take the lead. After I saw that, I was hoping Larson would win because he deserved it after making that move. Absolutely. He definitely proved that he uh, deserved to be not only running in the all-star race, but in victory lane. Uh, incredible run by Larson. And I know I don't want to just keep focusing on the open, but another driver I got to talk about is Bubba Wallace, because he's another one that, like Larson, we really saw um, we really saw him push for that opportunity. And we saw also how much it meant to him as well, which was uh, it was it was neat to see Bubba. And also, obviously, uh, Kevin Harvick finished second. Another driver uh, like Larson doesn't have a win this season, um, but that was the best finish for Harvick so far this year. So kind of, you know, a tricky situation to be in. You can tell that he was disappointed for not getting that win, but you have to believe that he's, he's getting there. It's got to come soon, right? I mean, I can't believe we're even talking about this this late into the season. I mean, last year it was a weird week when Harvick didn't win. Right. So to think coming into this year that we'd be however many races in, probably double digits at this point, and Harvick hasn't been to victory lane, that is just astonishing to me. And uh, I would love to say that his performance in the Open shows that they're going to be contenders next weekend at the Coke 600, but because it was a different package, I don't know if we can necessarily say that for sure. I mean, Obviously, the four car and Stuart Haas are always strong, so I, I certainly would not be surprised to see them running up front. But this package this past weekend is a little different, so I don't think that you can necessarily equate speed with this package to next weekend. Well, uh, yeah, definitely a great weekend of uh, all-star action, but like we were just talking about, it's going to be an even better the weekend this weekend with the Coca-Cola 600. Um, but a hot one at that. And speaking of hot, I know you were sponsor Hot Screen. We got to have a little <laughs> bit of fun at the track. So uh, when we come back, I'm excited to finally get my opportunity to try Hot Screen. Let's do it. 
I'm Kaz Gralla, driver of the number 21 Hot Scream Camaro for RCR, and my sponsor, Hot Scream Spicy Ice Cream, uh, is right here in my backpack, and I'm giving out samples to drivers and fans here at Charlotte Motor Speedway on this hot 88 degree day. So we're gonna go cool some people off and maybe spice things up out here. We're gonna have a little bit of black raspberry swirl for you to try. Yeah, it's pretty spicy, actually. Reminds me a little bit of my ex-girlfriend, but... Yeah, it's eight different peppers right in that flavor swirl there. First off, I'll, I'll ask you a couple questions. Obviously, you're a big pasta guy with the last name Alfredo, but are you a big ice cream guy? I am. I do like ice cream, but I've never thought about mixing it with, with spice, like, make it spicy, so this would be interesting. Dig into that caramel right there, that little swirl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a little spicy. Probably, that'll put it probably like a three or four out of 10 maybe. We found Corey LaJoy and right here we've got the espresso swirl for him to taste. Taste the espresso. Not much heat yet. It's an after effect. It's a late heat. It's like a, I don't know, what is that? Like a cayenne pepper, but not that much. Only like a two. Well, we have finally located Landon Castle and we've been able to get a pint of ice cream in his hand. So, so I, uh, this looks delicious by the way, Kaz, so thank you. I don't even eat dairy very much, so you might, are you gonna convert me back to like an ice cream, milk and sugar? This is, this is, looks delicious. You might have to be careful because if you like it too much, this, this could turn you back to the dark side. So <laughs> be careful. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Yes. Oh, okay, I'm getting some of the heat. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of the bite, but it's got that caramel in there. I want more of the caramel. It's like a three second delay to the spice, to the kick, yes. You get the caramel right off the bat. You get the, you know, you get the sugar, the sweetness. And you cool it back down mm -hmm. with your next bite. Of course, so you have to eat the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It's hot out today. I'm sure you're looking forward to cooling off with some ice cream. Can I give her a try? Yeah, we've got the espresso for you here today. All right, first attempt here. And they have a, oh my gosh, they do have a kick. <laughs> Holy cow, the more you eat them. Woo, that's really good and weird. Well, we have the rare and ever sought after blessing of having NASCAR Chasm here with us. And we've got the black raspberry swirl for him. Here we go, all righty. Mm. Wow, that's like a, it's like a, wow. Oh gosh, there it is. Wow, that's like a <laughs> it's like a 4th of July grand finale in your mouth. That's really good. My yeah, gosh. the best way to cool it off is with the next bite. That turned out great, and I think that you might have a new nickname in Papa Hot Scream. Oh, that God. was a line. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was a hot day out and you had to stand by and watch all of us eat ice cream for all those hours. So I think now it's gotta be your turn to, wow. to give the hot cream a try. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that because I did, I stood outside and like, it was decently hot and I watched a lot of people eat hot cream. So uh, I've seen everyone else's reaction. I'm excited to, to gauge, get an opinion of my own. Should we give it a try? Give it a try. Which one should I try though? I'll take your, your word for it since you're the, the ice cream man. My here. favorite was the salted caramel, but they came out with the black raspberry recently. And I gotta say that that might take the top spot. So okay. I highly recommend it. I will give the black raspberry swirl a go. But so while I'm, I'm trying this, um, I'm curious. So obviously we've come to the conclusion that spicy ice cream is not common by any means, <laughs> um, but also ice cream isn't super common in NASCAR sponsorships. How did you guys get working together? It's a crazy story actually. So it, it's one that you never really hear of. It's like the dream scenario. We had a fan last year uh, when we were Fury race cars with the number 61 car, we had a fan show up to our race shop and say, hey, I just got a lead on a sponsor. It's called Hot Scream. I just got off the phone with the CEO and he's interested in sponsoring in NASCAR. And he said, well, you guys are underdogs. I, I'm a fan of yours. I wanted to bring it to you guys and see if you guys can get the deal done. And sure enough, I mean, of course, in our minds, we're thinking, well, is this really gonna be true? Like, You're like, that is this seems, a joke? Spicy right. ice cream, what? It seems too good <laughs> to be true. And then we hear it's spicy ice cream. We're like, not sure about this. <laughs> well, we call 
And sure enough, it's a real thing, and a real CEO is really interested in sponsorship. So and we, it's good. It's fantastic. I love it mm. myself. I have to be careful not to eat too much of it on race weekend. I know. I've already eaten like four bites of this <laughs> just sitting here. Wow. That's a really crazy story. I love that. It's like two teams really just coming together, and it seems to have worked great for you guys uh, so far this season. And I'm looking forward to seeing you work with Hot Screen more in the future because this is delicious. It really is. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with them as well. I mean, they were a huge part of how I got my opportunity with Richard Childress Racing this year. So, I mean, I, I owe a lot to them and and uh, they've, they've paid me back in some pretty delicious ice cream. So we, we get to reap the benefits of that here. Well, and I'm happy that I'm getting to reap the benefits of it as well, if I'm being honest. You know, I will say though, Kaz, um, we spent a little bit of time, like I mentioned, and you guys watched at the racetrack and I didn't get to eat any ice cream. So in all of that time that I was watching you guys eat ice cream, I was kind of inspired, I guess you could say, by Hot Scream and your relationship that I figured, you know what, why not make my own version? of a hot scream ice cream you know i figured a um a paste lab version and just as i'm getting the opportunity to try your ice cream here i figured why not you take an opportunity to try mine okay well Great. i was wondering why they set a spoon out for me as wonderful. well wonderful so let's give this a try yeah give it a go you know um just as you grace me with this raspberry swirl flavor i'll let you uh dig into that and tell me what flavor and what you think about it be sure to get the, the swirl okay. just like you said okay because just like uh, hot scream, that's First where impressions, all the comes I'm from. smelling it. It smells like vanilla ice cream, but I dig in and there's some uh, suspect orange chunks going on. I'm not, I'm not too sure about them. Hmm. I'm loving it over here. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Thoughts? Comments? I don't know what that is, but it's kind of scaring me. Sometimes the best way to do is take another bite to cool it down. That's what I've heard mm. at least. Yes, you know, I'm gonna pass this time. This is not quite hot scream. I don't know what the orange chunks are, but... It's not living up to the hot scream? No, it's not. I, I don't, I really am confused as to what this is, but I'm not a fan. Do you think I have a future in ice cream? N no, you should probably just stick to eating hot scream rather. All right, well, while I was... <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your honesty because while I was getting to enjoy uh, raspberry hot scream, you were enjoying my own Pace Lab creation, two of my favorite foods, vanilla ice cream and cheese. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. they'll sponsor us one day. Yeah, you never not, know. Gotta love Pace Lab, sponsored by Cheesy Ice Cream. Something about the combination of the two really doesn't make it taste like cheese at all. But it doesn't taste good. I can confirm that for you. Whatever it tastes like, it's not a good thing. Well, guys, as always, I appreciate your honesty. I do. Um, and thank you for being a good sport. I definitely got the uh, better end of the deal here by getting to enjoy hot scream while you enjoyed my creation. So uh, I appreciate you and your honesty, but doesn't look like the Pace Lap will have a new sponsor anytime soon. So. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to have to wash that down with a bite of actual hot scream to get the flavor out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm cool with that. Let's just take a little break, sit back, enjoy some hot scream. And actually, when we come back, we might have to talk a little bit more racing, but it's the Coca-Cola 600 this weekend. So I'm anxious to hear all your thoughts. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Kaz, let's chat about Charlotte. You have experience at Charlotte, great experience at Charlotte, top 10 last year, first race with Fury. So talk to me a little bit about how you prepare to take on this race, because it's not like the other ones that we see on the schedule. Yeah, this is a grueling race. I mean, a lot of drivers say that turns three and four at Charlotte is the hardest turn in all of NASCAR. It, something about it, it looks so straightforward, but it is so difficult to get right. And what makes matters even more difficult is it's always a hot race here in Charlotte. I mean, I think I saw temperatures are scheduled to be like 93, 94 degrees for They're this calling weekend. for record highs. Yeah. Record high temperatures this weekend. So unlucky me, I'm not even running the race, but I do train at RCR with Tyler Reddick, who is running the race. And so our trainer decided that it would be good practice for us to be working out outside all week in hoodie sweatshirts and sweatpants. So today was the first day of that and it was about as enjoyable as you probably imagine it would be. Uh, so uh, Tyler and I have, have our work cut out for this week, but uh, I'm sure we'll get him ready for the race. 
Well, now I feel even worse about making you leave your workout and come here and eat cheese ice cream, <laughs> but that's okay. That No, that really is, that's amazing to think about the fact that um, it takes that kind of training just to prepare yourself to do something that you do every weekend. But that's just what shows, you know, that this race, this weekend, the heat, the mile and a half rough track that runs completely differently on both sides. It takes a lot of preparation uh, heading to Charlotte, especially because people don't always realize that, you know, the all-star race and the weekend of the 600 are so different, such different races. Um, so as far as drivers go, obviously the heat and uh, the track conditions are something to prepare for, but what are some of the biggest challenges um, that you foresee being an issue this weekend? Well, I mean, the track itself, uh, as I sort of alluded to already, it's just a difficult track. Um, it, it doesn't look like much. It's, it's a track that almost looks cookie cutter. They use that term a lot when talking about mile and a half, but it is not at all that. It, it drives completely differently than, than any other track, and the two ends drive differently. That's for the Xfinity guys. The Cup guys have one more additional challenge. It's the longest race of the year. I mean, stage one in the Coke 600 is longer than the entire All-Star race was. So it, it's gonna be a grueling night for those guys. So they're gonna have to prepare physically, mentally, and their cars are gonna endure a lot more than, than they normally would in a 400 or 500 mile race. So uh, that, that's always an interesting event to watch each year for me because you can see guys that are strong early in the race when the Temperatures are still hot. They're just starting to cool down from the day. But when you're going to be trying to win the race later that night, temperatures have cooled off. The track has changed a ton. And you're just hoping that your car is still on the racetrack because 600 miles is no easy task to ask a, a race car doing those speeds to do. All of the action is going to be at Charlotte Motor Speedway this weekend. So let's check out our weekend schedule. It all starts on Thursday. The Arca Series is kicking off the weekend at Charlotte with the General Tire 150. On Saturday, it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series back after a week off running the Alsco 300. And finally on Sunday, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is taking on Charlotte Motor Speedway, the longest race of the year, the Coca-Cola 600. Well, Kaz, as always, it's a pleasure having you on the Pace Lap and you're welcome back anytime as long as you continue to bring hot screen. I don't know if you'll see me back here after the cheese ice cream. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I, I deserve that one. I deserve that one, you're right. Well, hopefully I haven't ruined this friendship too much because um, I'm definitely a fan of hot scream and I'm always, I'm a fan of yours. So, Kaz, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come chat with me. Thank you. That's all for this week's episode of The Pace Lap. I'm Jesse Plunge here with Kaz Gralla. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the track. <laughs>